Hi everyone, it's Saturday. I'm going to speak about the Dulce of Elevez case. A little girl who was abducted on September 16th, a Monday, an Amber Alert was issued the next day. So I wanted to just show you this article from 6ABC. A forensic expert speaks and says this important statement. Kimberly Sue Moran, a teaching professor and director of forensics at Rutgers University Camden, is now involved in the investigation. I'm sorry, not involved, but is familiar with how large scale searches work. Investigators cast a wide net, connecting the dots to what is a dead end and what is not, she said. In forensic science, it's all about inclusion or exclusion. So, what sort of suspects or scenarios we can exclude. So, they look at like a reasonable story of what's going on and then they start excluding. So I'm going to call the suspect the orange shoe guy, just like when I follow the Delphi, Indiana case, we call the man the bridge guy. So I'm naming him the orange shoe guy. And I have an issue with something because I was wondering if at first they were implying that the orange shoe guy was just someone they wanted to speak with, even though there were witnesses that said she was led away. He drove off with the girl in a red van with tinted windows. He'd light skinned. He wore orange sneakers, red pants, and a black shirt. But they did mention that he had acne. And that's actually what I'm trying to understand how close they got to this person. So I wanted to just talk real briefly about what was revealed in my sleep. It was a day last week. Um, today's Saturday. I'm sorry. So it was actually this week. I think it was maybe Thursday. I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about this case. I'm not sure if I was having a dream, but the word first, first, F-I-R-S-T came into my mind. It woke me up like someone slapped me in the face almost. I mean, that's not what happened, but it was like I was just wide awake and that word and there was sort of a vision of, I was seeing like a street name, maybe. It's really hard to remember the vision, but I do remember the words. So I knew, I went back to sleep and I knew the next morning I'd have to look. Um, so I figured it was either first the name of a street, someone's last name, or maybe it was his first time doing this. But I did look at First Avenue in Bridgeton and there is a landscaping company located on that street because there's first, second, third, and fourth. I think it might be an avenue, but whatever. So then I watched the Psychic Sleuth. Sometimes I watch her channel and she did get a reading on this case and she did say something about landscaping, but I'm just saying the word first, they need to look there because I'm not seeking information that I don't know. I'm not seeking the unknown. It was just revealed to me. And I, one of my favorite sayings is everything that you need to know will be revealed to you. So let me go to, okay. So they're saying that people were playing basketball. So now I'm going to show you one of the pictures that I found in maps. Here we go. It's a really good picture. I'll bring it closer. Oops, sorry. Um, here it is. Okay, so this is from Google Maps when I Googled Bridgeton Park. It's a beautiful park. They even have a zoo. This is a picture of the Brighton Park. And this is the overall view. So it looks to me, I'm going to use my pointer, that this area here is the parking area this is definitely basketball court and here's the playground i believe the swings this is the buildings another road comes down so i wanted to just talk about the people that were playing at the courts and there was about two dozen i think the report said and this is on 6abc 
So if the mom parked here, and I've never been to the park, so I don't know if there's another parking area, but it looks like when they were saying 30 yards away, she was parked about 30 yards. That's about 30 yards from here to here. I don't know which space she parked in. I don't have any more information than anyone else. This is my speculation, and these are my theories. Some of what I'm saying is fact, and you can read about it online. I'll leave some links to some sites that I've been visiting. All right, so they went over here, her and the brother. The people here at these nets, now if they were playing, there's nets here and there's nets here. If the people were playing here and he took her behind the buildings in a car, I'm sure they could see him. But my question is, how did they know he had facial acne? The more recent websites are not saying that he has facial acne. They're saying he's light skinned, wearing the orange shoes, red pants, black shirt, and he's smaller. He's not a real tall dude. How did they see that he had acne? I mean, even with good eyesight, if someone is maybe 20 feet away, now you can definitely see if they would have a beard or facial hair perhaps, but the acne, I, I'm just wondering if they saw him on the courts. Maybe he was playing basketball with them. Now I do have four different theories about this, which I'll talk with after I show you the picture. So let me see if I can just make it a little bit bigger without closing it out. All right, so here's a larger picture of the bass. See, there's some basketball nets. Here's the playground. There the swings are there. Here's the buildings. So if they saw the dude lead her to a car, he must have been parked here. They would have had to see the car and they would have had to see that he put her in the back seat because if he was behind the buildings, they wouldn't be able to see that from the courts. But we don't know if the witnesses were only at the court or if there was other people who were witnesses at the playground. I mean, the point is, my, th my question is just so confusing to me. How did they know he has acne? They, he must have been close up. So you'll hear more about my theories in um, my next uh, video after, I mean, it's connected to this video, but I had to stop my video and record this because under the bright lights, when I'm doing my acrylic pour painting, you can't see this picture. It just blots out the tablet. So this is on my tablet. You can go to Google Maps and look at this. Now I do have that intuition about the word first and I did look at First Avenue and I looked at the overhead view and there is red cars there. And it's hard to tell if it's a red car or a red van, but there's plenty of red cars and it is near First Avenue, which last night also I wanted to say I did have something wake me up again and it was the color blue. I have no idea what that is, but it sometimes I think about the Delphi case, the Delphi, Indiana case with the two teenagers. I'm following that case also. So I did get the word blue that seemed really significant. It just, it woke me up again. So I'm not sure if that blue, there's someone with the name of blue. There's another car that's blue. It's not really that detailed for I can say that how it's connected to this. But anyway, so here's the basketball court. Here's the parking area. Somewhere probably around here. Because I'm sure if the dude brought her over here, the mom would have seen. And she might have even been crying. We don't know. So let's try to identify this suspect. Orange shoe guy. That's what I'm calling him. Let's name him that just like the bridge guy in Delphi. So orange shoe guy, black, uh, red pants. Who wears orange shoes and red pants? Someone out there knows him. Please help. Let's identify this suspect. Thanks for watching and continue on to the next part of the video. So that you can help solve this case because someone knows this guy. So here's my silly notes. All right, this is how I scribble. This is a good way brainstorming to show, whoops, sorry, I'm knocking the camera. It's to show your ideas very quickly. So your ideas come in a flash, just like in the middle of the night. If you wake up, 
and you have an idea, even if it's for just artwork or anything in your life that you need a solution or you have a brilliant idea, always have a pad and pencil sit or, or pen, whatever, something to write your idea very quickly. It does come in a flash. I'm telling you, I know this. I am not psychic. I'm just saying I have very good intuition. So the first one, so number one is, was he a witness? Did he go to use the bathroom? Was someone ask him, did someone ask him to bring the girl to the car? I'm sure there's bathrooms around there. And again, don't let your children use the bathroom by themselves. You don't know who's lurking, especially um, even a boy, 10. Take the boy into the bathroom with you. It's okay. No one's going to say anything. Um, I'm just saying for his safety and even the girl's safety. Take your children with you. Don't let them use the bathroom by themselves in a public place. So is this guy a witness? Did he, was he asked or paid to take the girl to the car, the red car or van rather that where she was put into the back seat? Number two, does he hang around there? The, do the other people know him? Was he waiting there to see if any children were coming that day or any other day? Is he well known to the people? How did they know he had acne? How close did they get? So go, I'm sorry the picture's not showing up very well, but there, I mean, if they're at the right hand side of that basketball court, they might have seen him. Maybe the car was like 20 feet away. So I don't know. Can you tell if someone has acne? You can see if they have a beard. Three. Was he shooting baskets by himself? You know, there's at least four basketball nets there. So maybe he was just hanging out that day to see if there's anybody showing up that he could kidnap. Or my other one I thought was, did he see them at the convenience store where they were buying the ice cream? Did he hear them talking? Oh, we're going to go to the park. Uh, you know, do we need to take anything else and he heard them talking and he thought oh let me follow these people so he might have seen them at the ice cream store and followed them there so any of these really I mean we're, we're not being told a lot but somebody knows somebody that wears orange sneakers red pants orange sneakers if my neighbor wore orange sneakers I definitely would notice that I don't notice a lot about my neighbors I don't know when they get a new car I'm just not involved in my neighbor's lives, but the orange sneakers, I think, would stand out. So I'm calling him the orange shoe guy, and I'm going to do the acrylic pour now. I encourage you to read about the case. I hope someone comes forward about this. All right, so today I'm going to use this little, I think it's a creamer or syrup jar. It's glass. And I'm going to remove the top, and if you can see, it comes out. And I'm going to put the paints in. I'm just using leftover paint. Different colors. I did mix a few other colors. Um, and today I'm using the, let me show you, the Pouring Medium by Apple Barrel, which they sent me two uh, two 16 ounce I believe yeah 16 ounce of those because the ones from Amazon were all like chunks and I'm gonna add the gloves so today I'm going to start with some weight on the canvas this is going to be a pour that's I guess in a ring. I'm not sure. Let me, I don't know. I'm trying to do new things here and I want to make it different than the other ones. So I'm just going to put some weight in the bottom Then I'm going to start adding the colors. I'll try not to make the mud. And I try to have it even. Let's do, this is a glitter, whoops, the glitter paint and orange. We need Use some of this. I have to take my yellow tinted glasses. These are safety glasses, and I use them when I'm mixing because I 
had an experience where some of the pouring medium splashed. But this is a really pretty navy by Deco Art. I'm just pouring it down the side. And the color here is a purple. I mixed up the ones I used for the repeat the question pour, the blue and the pink eraser from Apple Barrel. So I made a pink and blue makes the purplish. Little muddy, but that's okay. This is glitter paint. It's a little thick. Oh, I know why, because I added, I think I'm going to take some of this out with my hand. Oh, that's a mess. All right, let me take this out. Look at that. That is crazy. It's all like gluey. There might have been some glue in the cup, because I was experimenting with some glue. All right, so now I like to brighten it up with the yellow, so I'll pour that down the other side a little bit. Remember, this is my first time doing like kind of a ring pour. So let's add a little bit more of this paint. Some white. This is a white glitter. This is some leftover paints. And now we know that green and pink would make a mud, but I have the white in between, so we're hoping. Let me see if I can get the, I like these bottles because they have the red tip, but you wind up losing the tip. Whoops, the green's mixing in. Not sure how that's going to work out. Well, whatever I get, I get. And add some purple. Not sure if I have enough paint in here. And let's see, I think I'll add little bit more navy just a tad and this is a metallic so little dulce we need to find her if you know anybody that drives a red car like that was it someone she knew please solve the case it's really sad to have anyone taken a little child so innocent so this is for Dulce. Let's say some prayers tonight. I'm going to take my, call it a syrup pour. I'm going to open it, just press it. And I'm going to start pouring it out. I'm going to do a ring-ish. I'm going to turn it this way. That way it doesn't get all the, oh, that's pretty. actually prettier than I thought it would be. <laughs> you just never know with acrylic pouring. I mean, you'd have some control of it, and now there's no silicone in this, but I do have glycerin. Just an experiment to see if glycerin, it's skin care, vegetable glycerin. It's kind of sticky. I did put some on my skin. I didn't like the feel of it. Just torch this a little bit. You can see some of the glitter. I can see it. Then I go like this. I mean, some people tilt this, then they torch. I don't know. I do whatever I feel like. I do like these colors. They're really pretty. So I'm going to tilt it a little bit. So I try to come back to the center. You don't have to go real fast. You can just... Okay, we're getting a lot of purple now, so I think I'm going to... See if I can just come over. Come back to the center and then you make a decision where you want to go. I really don't like that blue up there, so that's fine. So 
So remember what I said about the first whether it's First Avenue, that could be someone's last name. I definitely want to get rid of, I don't like that blue up there. Oh, but I kind of like the blue here. All right, let's see what we're getting. Hmm. Not sure about this. I don't know about that part. I like anything. So I think what I'm gonna do is torch it. Look at this. Look at that glue. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's just really... I don't know about that. I don't know what to do. I could just drop a little bit. Well, I know. I'm going to spray this all with the alcohol now and see if anything comes up interesting. This is 99% alcohol in a really fine mist. I love these. They're really hair sprayers, but I've used them. So now there's a danger when I torch this that it will set on fire. I don't like that thing in the middle. Let's see. Oh, I'm taking the wrong color. I'm just putting like some pink in here. And I guess I'll try to torch it. I'm going to definitely get rid of this. And one more try with the blue. How about the navy? Navy is pretty color goes with everything thanks for watching guys I really appreciate everything I appreciate you watching so I'm just taking some of this color and maybe And I'll just pour some of the white, maybe. I think this is the glitter. So basically, I'd really just like to let the paint do what it's going to do, because that's the beauty. I don't want to make this a painting necessarily. But 
I don't want to make it realistic. It's just a pour. But it's beautiful. Have fun with it. going to take some of it off and I'm, I am going to bring this over now and down I guess I don't know not so happy I like it I'm, I'm not so happy with it I like the yellow in there, it really brightens it really nice. I think I'm going to take that green off. You know, a lot of my paintings, just, I always get something over here, but nothing over there. But this is okay. I'm going to leave it like this now. It'll, it might change a little bit. I'm going to just torch it, like, one more time. This is pretty right over here. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to stop the video. I'm probably going to pour another one, but I'm not going to show it on camera right now because I need to maybe mix up a few more paints. All right, that's it. That's the pour. This is for Dulce Olives. Please be on the lookout for the orange shoe guy. Read about it online. I live in Philadelphia, PA, not that far from Bridgeton. It's, I mean, it's not real close either, but it's in my neighborhood, I consider. Thanks so much, guys. I love you so much. I really appreciate that you listened to me, and I will see you next time.